have you ever looked at the night sky and wondered if you could map out every star out there? Well, that's what professional sky watchers do. So, astronomers have come up with this method of mapping out the entire sky and that is basically called the celestial sphere. Most of this video will be talking about what the celestial sphere is, different parts of the celestial sphere, and how we can locate a particular star or give an address to a particular star in the sky. Before we begin with the celestial sphere, it's important that we know what the horizon is. The horizon is the line where land meets the sky, or maybe you could say appears to meet the sky. This is that line which we call the horizon. Now, if you started turning towards the left or the right and went one complete circle, you would realize that the horizon is kind of circular, right? And so, this is how the horizon looks when you have a bird's eye view. Okay, so the celestial sphere, what is it? This sphere I've drawn here, that is the celestial sphere. Now, let's say it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon, so it's daytime, and the sun is somewhere here. When you look up at the sky, you see it all bright, you see the sun, and you hardly see any stars. But the sky above you looks like a hemisphere. And this upper hemisphere, which is transparent, is visible to you. The hemisphere that's below you is not visible to you. Let's take another scenario when it's 1 a.m. in the night. So it's pretty late in the night, you can see stars in the night sky. The sun is now somewhere underneath and it's not visible to you. So, in the visible portion you see stars and the sun is somewhere hidden in the portion in the hemisphere which is not visible. So, the celestial sphere is defined as a virtual sphere. It's an imaginary sphere in which stars and other heavenly bodies move. We're going to dive into this topic and it's going to be a little technical, so gear up. So here are two points that are pretty important that we're going to discuss. Right above your head, when you look up, whether it's the day or the night, right above your head when you look up, you see a point, and that point on the celestial sphere is called the zenith. The zenith is the point that's vertically above the observer. And opposite to this point is vertically below the observer on the celestial sphere, a point called the nadir. The nadir is basically the point that is vertically below the observer. Now, what's the point of all these points and all these spheres and hemispheres? We want to track a particular star and locate a particular star. All this helps us locate a star, a galaxy, a planet, or any other heavenly body. Okay, now you may ask, well, how do you actually do it? Let me give you an example. Let's say there's a star there. I can say that this star is 30 degrees above the east direction on the celestial sphere. And that can help me mark or map out the entire night sky or the daytime sky. If we want to go one step further, we could do something like this. We know that on the Earth we use latitude and longitude to mark a specific location. We could do that with the celestial sphere as well. After all, that's a sphere too, right? So we could draw those latitude longitude lines and then it would be very easy to spot a star and then locate it. So let's say this is a star. I could easily give it an address because now I have those latitude and longitude lines. Okay, so now we have some kind of idea about why we want to do all this, right? Now let's get back to the idea of the celestial sphere. So this is the celestial sphere. The zenith and the nadir are marked. Do you see that axis there, right? That axis passes through the North Pole and the South Pole. It's the axis about which the Earth rotates, right? So it's the axis of rotation. It's also called the North-South axis. Now, this North Pole and this South Pole is the geographic North Pole and the geographic South Pole. In the celestial sphere, we have something called the celestial poles. The geographic South Pole and North Pole are on the Earth, but in the celestial sphere, we have poles as well. So this axis of rotation, this north-south axis, it cuts the celestial sphere at the celestial north pole and cuts the celestial sphere again at the celestial south pole. So the points where the Earth's north-south axis meets the celestial sphere, these points are called the celestial north pole and the celestial south pole. There's an interesting thing here. There's a particular star at the celestial north pole, or very close to the celestial north pole. It's called the Polaris star or the pole star. Very useful for navigation. It's very useful as a reference in the night sky. 
especially for the northern hemisphere okay so we've defined two more things the celestial north pole the celestial south pole now let's move ahead and define another thing and this one's pretty interesting we've defined quite a few points now the zenith the nadir the celestial north pole and the celestial south pole there's a circular loop that runs through all four of these and that is called the meridian interesting right let me write down the definition as well so it's the circular loop in the celestial sphere that passes through the zenith the nadir the celestial north pole and the celestial south pole okay so one more term done next we got to discuss the celestial equator this is the second last term uh, hold on it'll be done and it's pretty interesting we have an equator for the earth right if the earth has an equator why not make an equator for the celestial sphere as well that's it the equator on the celestial sphere is called the celestial equator now the thing is the celestial equator is parallel to the equator on the earth now the thing is the celestial equator and the equator on the earth are parallel and they lie on the same plane okay so the line where the earth's equator if extended would reach the celestial sphere that particular line is called the celestial so this line is called the celestial equator now to the last term it's called the ecliptic the sun and the earth are marked here from the earth when you look at the sun the sun will appear to be amongst the stars but at that point on the celestial sphere right let's say some time passes and the earth has come here now the sun will appear to be at this point of the celestial sphere a little while later a few months later maybe the sun appears here the sun is now moving on a line in the celestial sphere right that line is basically the ecliptic so if we take a bird's eye view this is how it's going to look and this line along which the sun moves is going to be the ecliptic the path formed by the sun in the celestial sphere during the revolution of the earth is the celestial sphere that's it for this video